If you wanna make talking head YouTube videos like this one, but you don't wanna have the microphone right in front of you in the video the entire time, there's really only two options. One is using a lavalier mic, maybe a wireless mic like the MoveLink M2, which I've reviewed in a couple months ago. Or you can use a short shotgun microphone just out of frame like the VDS M2 from Godox, which is uh, the sponsor, the, the subject of this video. They, are, they provided this microphone plus this fantastic, huge softbox and professional video light to make a video. So this video will be broken up into several different sections. First is setting up the microphone uh, to the camera the way I have it set up for recording this video. Then we'll need some test recordings to process, so I'll just tell you about the microphone. Then we'll jump into Reaper and talk about processing for the microphone. Uh, you'll be able to hear unprocessed plus processed audio and use some of the free Reaper plugins to clean up the audio, and these will be techniques that will work on this microphone or any other microphone, any voice specific dialogue that you're doing with a mic in a setup like this. So I've got this set up with a mic stand behind my desk. It's coming up over my screens. And then at the end of the boom arm, I've got a magic arm. This is made by newer and there's a little adapter at the end of that. Then it's mounted to the shock mount of the microphone. The mic is connected with the TRRS cable. I've got it going into a little headphone extension cable. So with this, I'm not able to do a dual mono connection because I'm losing one of the signals going through the headphone cable. But if I had the right cable, I could do it even better. That's plugging into the camera, which has the mic level set to minus 12, which is the lowest setting. And that seems to be the best setting for this particular camera with pretty much any of the mics that I've connected to it. And so if you were just recording onto the camera, that would be pretty much the entire setup. In this case, I'm recording from my camera over HDMI into a capture card into OBS. And the capture card actually brings in the audio from the camera into OBS as a separate source. So this mic was sent to me from Godox. The microphone itself, it's a short shotgun microphone designed for use on camera for vlogging or short boom, uh, short distance booming like this one. And it uses uh, eighth inch TRRS or TRS connection, uh, 3.5 millimeter standard kind of headphone cable or the cable, uh, tip ring ring sleeve connection. It comes with all the cables you would need as well as a USB-C cable for charging the internal battery. When using the 3.5 millimeter connection to a camera, it will automatically turn on and off for you when the camera turns on and off. So the internal battery keeps it going, but the power on and off, you don't need to worry about it, which is a fantastic feature. If you've ever used any of the competing microphones, a lot of them do not have auto power on and off. So it's very easy to forget to turn it on or forget to turn it off when you're done shooting and then you end up with a dead battery. It's very easy to charge the battery on this because it has a USB-C connection. So you can connect it to a battery bank or to a computer to charge. Um, also on that connection, you get a USB audio interface. So you can use the mic as a microphone with headphone out through the uh, 3.5 millimeter output. You can use it for recording a podcast or a Zoom call, something like that. Uh, and hear yourself direct monitoring through the headphones, which is a nice feature, although there are some uh, difficulties with that, which we'll talk about later on in the video. For buttons and switches on the microphone, there is a minus 20 dB pad, a safety option where the right channel gets attenuated by several dB, and so you have uh, the full strength signal plus a attenuated signal on the other side, and as long as you're using the right type of cable into the right type of connection, you'll get that as left channel and right channel. For post-processing, that's a great feature. Uh, there's a little LED indicator for showing clipping at the top. Then there's a 75 and 150 hertz low cut filter, which greatly reduces the bass in the signal, which is fantastic for removing uh, wind noise at the microphone without affecting the vocal signal too much. You're not gonna wanna use that indoors unless you've got some sort of low rumble that you need to knock out at the mic. 
there's a power button as well as a high frequency boost, which is helpful if you're using a fluffy windscreen, which tends to dampen a lot of the sounds of high frequencies, uh, but this will increase the hiss, uh, self noise of the mic somewhat. And then finally, at the bottom of the microphone, there is a dial for one to 15 dB increments of gain. In general, we wanna keep this at the highest level for most connections. In this case, I've got it on number 11 on that dial, going into the camera at minus 12 uh, camera setting that seems to hit minus six or so at the loudest for my voice at this distance, which is about, I don't know, 15 inches away. This is a short shotgun microphone with a super cardioid polar pattern. So uh, it is very directional, but that can affect the sound if you turn off axis. And if I turn all the way around, then you can hear how that affects the sound of my voice. Also, if I look down and look up, that's obviously going to change the sound, make it darker, maybe make it thinner and that sort of thing. And now let's import this footage and start processing this as audio. All right, so I am back on the Shure SM7B. For the screen capture, this is a little bit easier because I need to have the audio coming through on the same channels. So not using the overhead mic right now. And also I thought that it might be easier to tell when I'm talking versus when I'm playing back my own voice. So having a different mic helps with that. So I've imported the footage as an audio file. And the first thing I need to do is convert this to mono. So in Reaper, it's very simple. Item properties, take channel mono left. Because in this case, both signals are the exact same, I could just delete one of those channels and, uh, or not delete, but I've hidden that other channel that's not used, that's exactly the same. It's only increasing the volume, don't need that. Let's play this back. This is a, my first time hearing this. So this mic was sent to me from Godox along with a large uh, professional video light and softbox. I added in a grid diffuser to the softbox. The microphone itself, it's a short shotgun microphone designed for use on camera for vlogging or short boom, uh, short distance booming like this one. And it so there's a bit of background noise that I'd like to remove. That is partly the mic and partly the, the light, which has a fan built in and just general noise around the apartment. There's a window open, there's cars driving by, there's a fridge um, not that far away, which gets into every recording that I do. So I'm gonna look for a part that's pretty much just a uh, silence or not talking. Internal battery. When using the, when using the three, this part right here, that's long enough. I'm gonna enable looping. And so if I play this back, you'll hear just the self noise. Minus 47.2, a little loud. We're gonna suppress that using the free included with Reaper Refer plugin, R-E-A-F-I-R. This is an FFT processor. This can be used for noise reduction. So I'm gonna set the mode not to EQ, but to subtract. I'm gonna check this box, automatically build noise profile enabled during noise. So check this box, press play, and we're gonna keep this on loop for a second. And there's the noise profile. I'm gonna uncheck automatically build noise. And let's play back some of that audio. Uh, 3.5 millimeter standard kind of headphone cable or the cap uh, tip ring ring sleeve connection. It comes with all the cables you would need and as without well as a USB-C cable for charging the internal battery. When using the uh, 3.5, honestly, that's acceptable. I've heard a lot worse noise reduction jobs uh, in YouTube videos, but we can do this a little bit better. We're actually going to reduce the kind of the sensitivity or the amount of reduction on here. It's kind of a hidden feature. You can hold down the command key or control on Windows and drag anywhere in the line. And that's going to reduce kind of the sensitivity of it. Uh, 3.5 millimeter standard kind of headphone cable or... There's also another view for this. If we click the UI button, uh, we can also adjust the EQ curve offset. Standard kind of headphone cable or the cap uh, tip ring ring sleeve connection. It comes with all the cables you would need 
as well as a USB-C cable for charging the internal battery. When using the uh, 3.5 millimeter internal battery. And right there sounds really good. It's cleaning up the vocal, but it's not taking away from the vocal. So that's the first processor. Next, we're going to do some EQ. I think that the voice is coming through a little thin because it's at a distance. I'm not getting any proximity effect unless I'm looking directly at it. I'm just used to a little bit more bass in my voice here. Standard kind of headphone cable or the cable, uh, tip ring ring sleeve connection. And because I filtered out all of the lows from the background noise, I can actually bump up the lows slightly on my voice there. Your standard kind of headphone cable or the cable, uh, tip ring ring sleeve connection. It comes with all the cables you would need, as well as a USB-C cable. And so I'm just looking for some sort of like honky, hollow sort of sound, like a tin can or cardboard box sort of sound. Your standard kind of headphone cable or the cable. Uh, and so right there for 450 hertz, basically, I uh, made a boost there to identify that frequency that I was already hearing a little bit, and I'm gonna pull that down slightly. Standard kind of headphone cable or the cable, uh, tip ring ring sleeve connection. Now I'm thinking, is it bright enough? I'm not sure. Let's jump to another section here. It will automatically turn on and off for you when the camera turns on and off. So the internal battery keeps it going, but the power on and off, you don't need to worry about it, which is a fantastic. It will automatically turn on and off for you when the camera turns on and off. So here's the EQ. I've basically given a little bit of a bass boost to help with proximity effect at the distance. Found one sort of hollow, honky frequency that I don't really like. I'm debating whether I should do a little bit of a, a mid-frequency cut or boost. Honestly, it could go either way, depending on if it has to go over background music or anything like that. And then, yeah, highs up or down, I'm not really sure. I'm not super used to these headphones. They're closed back. They're, they're, uh, so they're not that accurate. I, I think I'll leave it like that. And so here is no EQ. When using the 3.5 millimeter connection to a camera, it will automatically turn on and off for you and on. When using the 3.5 millimeter connection to a camera, it will automatically turn on and off for you. Let's move on to dynamics. You can see just from the waveform that it's, it's a fairly dynamic signal. There's some very quiet parts like right here. Turns on and off. Turn, I tr kind of trail off at the end, but the beginning of the sentence is pretty loud. It will automatically turn on and off. I might use either one or two compressors. I can use the relimit first. And so this is one of the newer uh, Reaper plugins. And basically, what we just want to chop off the tops of this kind of. Let's see what our peak is. It will automatically turn on and off for you. It's it hit minus five. Let's set the brick wall ceiling to minus seven, and then we need to push in the signal a similar amount. Let's do minus seven point seven. It will automatically turn on and off for you. So these loud peaks should be pushed down to the similar level of everything else. Power on and off, you don't need to worry about In general, I keep this release slider uh, at the default 15 dB per second option. Keep it at the, at the 15 dB per second and just don't over compress. I'm gonna play this section back and you can hear it without limiting. When using the 3.5 millimeter connection to a camera, it will automatically turn on and off for you when the camera turns on and off. And on. When using the 3.5 millimeter connection to a camera, it will automatically turn on and off for you when the camera turns on and off. It's a little more consistent going into the next step, which is compression. So we're gonna use Recomp. Recomp is a fairly standard clean compressor. We can set this to a ratio of about four to one or exactly four to one. And let's set the knee size to six dB. So audio coming close to the threshold, but not quite reaching the threshold, will be compressed at a lower ratio. Keeping everything else at the default, we're just going to adjust the threshold until we start to see some gain reduction happening on this red meter here. When using the 3.5 millimeter connection to a camera, it will automatically turn on and off for you when the camera turns on and off. It will automatically- That's too far. It sounds like it's jumping up and down. When the camera turns on and off. So the internal battery keeps it going, but the- Because I'm 
doing like 6 dB or so, turning down, I can also turn up the signal by a bit, let's say four and a half. It will automatically turn on and off for you when the camera turns on and off. So the internal battery keeps it going, but the power on and off, you... And now that it's gone through the EQ limiting and compression, I'm gonna go back to the noise reduction and maybe just tweak that slightly so it's doing a little bit more. It will automatically turn on and off for you when the camera turns on and off. So the internal battery keeps it going, but the power on and off, you don't need to worry about it, which is a fantastic feature. Uh, Cause if you've, ever, uh, if you've ever used any of the competing microphones, a lot of them do not have auto power on and off. So it's very easy to forget to turn it on or forget to. I think that's where I like to hear it now. Let's jump to a different section we haven't heard a million times. So all effects bypass, this is the original recording. Also on that connection, you get a USB audio interface. So you can use the mic as a microphone with headphone out through the uh, 3.5 millimeter output. Focus the sound, cleaned up the hiss, thickened it slightly by doing the bass boost on the EQ. Also took out some hollow kind of weirdness that I didn't like and made the dialogue more consistent uh, using the limiter and compressor. That's pretty much where I would leave that with that setup. I think the self noise is not great. There are other mics in similar price ranges that have better self noise, but with some gentle processing that you're going to do anyways with any mic, uh, I think it holds up fine. Uh, it's not really an issue for me. One more important issue that I have run into is using the USB connection for Zoom calls, that sort of thing. Uh, you do get occasional glitches. So now I've got the Godox connected to an iPad Air Gen 4, I think it is. This is the one before uh, the M1 version that's currently out. Uh, this one was released in 2020. It's a great iPad. Um, Front-facing camera, obviously. And yeah, USB-C connection, and I'm monitoring in real time. And I, to be honest, I don't like that I don't really have any control over my headphones versus the microphone because that volume knob on the back of the mic, that adjusts both. So if I want, um, if I want to hear myself less loudly in my headphones, I or if I want my uh, whoever I'm talking to on a Zoom call, for example, if I want them quieter, I, I'm i not really able to monitor that. So um, I can uh, I can turn down the volume here, but that's also turning down the volume in the recording. And so you probably notice that I'm coming through a lot quieter when I do that. So, um, and coming in th really loud in your headphones makes you talk quieter in most cases, so that's not something you want to do. And not hearing yourself at all in the headphones might make you talk too loud. So um, right here is about where I'd like to put it, which is about 13, 14 on the dial there. I've got the high frequency boost on there just as an example of how that sounds. And also um, you may notice that there's some dropouts or glitches in the USB audio. Maybe it's just this unit, but um, in the recordings that I've done with the USB-C connection with a couple different cables um, connected to my Mac, connected to the iPad, um, they've both had some glitches. It would be nice to be able to just use a little compact thing like this um, for a portable recording session for a portable podcasting uh, setup, being able to record just into an iPad with this, being able to monitor on this, um, not have to worry about plosives because it has the built-in pop filter or included pop, pop filter. And now let's try out the uh, low cut. So this is the 75 uh, hertz low cut. And uh, I probably have to blow into the mic for you to actually hear the difference. But you may hear the, the lows of my voice get cut out. And now here's... 150 hertz, so this is, you know, no lows in my voice at all. Um, it sounds similar in my headphones, just kind of like the low rumble of the, the apartment is kind of gone. And now back to normal. Here's normal. And uh, yeah, I sound more like me.
I'm not sure if they're able to send a firmware update to fix that, maybe even reduce the self noise. I know that Rode has done that with their similar microphone, um, but that would be great to see. Hopefully they can do that. I've compared this mic to several others. This is how it sounds if you just don't have a microphone at all. You have to use your camera for capturing audio. Movo VXR10 Pro. This is a super short shotgun microphone. I don't know if you can really even call it a shotgun microphone. Cardioid pattern. It's meant for vlogging on a phone, that sort of thing. Now I've connected the Rode video mic, which is the original version of it. They've got a dozen other mics right now. Um, I'm using this one because my brother owned it and he's had it for years, says it's pretty decent. Um, and probably you wouldn't go out and buy with this mic anymore, but if you did, you probably find it for about $100. The next mic in this shootout is the Tackstar. I don't remember the model name. I'll put it up on screen. Um, but this is a mic that I found today at the local pawn shop. I got them to sell it to me for $30, which is pretty much the price you'll see anywhere uh, for new. And the last mic in this shootout is the Rode NTG2. I've owned this one for a few years. This is what you would consider to be kind of a mid-range professional shotgun microphone. I've got it into a shock mount. I have an XLR to 8th inch adapter connected there. I have a AA battery in there to power it and it's going into the camera. I think sound quality holds up. Very natural sound, it sounds like me, whereas some of these others are very sort of filtered, weird sounding, and not so great. Um, although some of them have better self noise. Always benefits and trade offs with different mics. They all have different sound, they all have different features. Huge thanks to Godox for sending me this mic. I'm sure that I'll be using it a lot. And even bigger thanks for this amazing uh, video light and softbox that I'll be using in all my videos going forward. It just makes things so simple. Uh, and I think it looks better. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.